are now locked into the Live with Brandon Blakeney podcast. Here is your host, Brandon Blakeney. This is a different level of intensity that I'm not sure. I mean, this is the first year in, what, eight years that the Fever have been in the playoffs? They did not know what to expect in this matchup. They, they had nothing to gauge the intensity that the Sun were going to come out with. The Sun looked like they had been there plenty of times. They look confident, and they used the third quarter. They came out of that halftime break and straight punched Indiana in the mouth. Guys, welcome in. If this is your first time, welcome into the Live with Brandon Blakeney podcast. Of course, I am your host, Brandon Blakeney, a.k.a. Brandon Lee TV. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, comment, like, share, and all that good stuff to stay up with the latest. But yeah, the Fever's inexperienced today. They folded. They folded. The inexperience, I think, hurt them today. It really showed. It really showed today the inexperience and how valuable the experience of being there before and playing playoff basketball can truly make a difference. In those crucial moments, those crucial possessions, like we saw Alyssa Thomas control the tempo of this game. When they were when the fever were going on runs. And it was back and forth when the Sun were going on runs. When they had a, a steady lead, they were playing a bit out of control. And AT really settled things down for them. AT really controlled the tempo of this game. That veteran presence, that 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 chemistry that they have. They played a lot of games together. The core of this Connecticut Sun group, and then you add in a sharpshooter and another capable playmaker. Who plays who plays with tenacity, who plays with energy, who plays with that dog in her in Marina Mabry, as Sky fans are well aware. And you have a very good recipe for success. I do think Caitlin was getting the same shot she typically gets, though, and they just weren't falling. Yo, they have no answer for Bonner. They have no answer for Bonner. I mean, at that height, she really looked like KD with the crossover. Like, they were just blowing by. Poor Lexi Hole. She's out there doing her darndest. She is out there giving max effort. But she's giving up some serious size out there. She is the only chance they have of even attempting to contain Dewana Bonner, and they just have no answer. AT with a triple double today controlled the entire tempo of the game. She was the orchestrator out there, man, and we watched a beautiful symphony put on by the Connecticut Sun. Yeah, we know. I mean, Caitlin is the key to this ignition. If she's not playing well, if she's not able to push the tempo, make those shots, those logo threes that we love to see. If she's not able to be effective with the ball in her hands, this offense does not hum the same. Absolutely. They never established a rhythm. And it's a testament. It's a testament to the Connecticut Suns defense, man. Like, they played exceptionally well. They came and set the tone. They were physical. They contested shots. They were physical on the glass. They won the 50-50 balls. They out-hustled the fever. They played quick and fast at the Fever's pace and played it better than them, fast pace. Got buckets in transition. And then when they got the lead, they slowed it down and just dissected the Fever in that half-court offense. Yeah, it's prodigal. Tom A.T. had that triple dub, man. She messed around. Yeah, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Troy, welcome in. Welcome in. The Sun on a mission to win. Or dissolve the team. Congratulations on CC for Rookie of the Year. And Asia Wilson got that unanimous MVP. Caitlin, unanimous Rookie of the Year. Asia, unanimous MVP for the Las Vegas Aces. And very much well deserved. Yeah, if he got the, if he got the uh, Minnesota Lynx on, their, on her back right now. He has got her. She's got this team on her back right now. It was a, it was tough. It was a tough debut, and it, I mean, it was a small sample size, right? We wanted to know what playoff Caitlin would look like, 
And we got a small sample size today. Yeah, Nafisa Collier is special. He is special. I think the Minnesota Lynx have a very good chance of winning the title this year. I love Bridget Carlton. McBride's out there shooting the leather off the basketball right now. Cordy Williams is good. Like, yeah. Sister Nova, welcome in. Welcome in. Yeah, it was a very bad, lackluster, some would describe it maybe as disastrous performance for the Fever today. Never got anything going. They, they look like pre-Olympic break Fever. And Coach Christy Sod got a whole, she got a tape. It was tough, man. The sun came ready. You could tell one team had playoff basketball experience and one team did. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, the way it's looking, man, we could see a sweep of the Beaver and we could see a sweep of Atlanta. I'm expecting Atlanta to get swept. I honestly thought the Mercury were, were going to get swept, but they are in a dogfight right now with Minnesota. It's an 88-89 ball game. Kalia Copper has a chance to tie the game at 89 with 344 left. This is a ball game right now. 15% from three for Clark. Yeah. That's not going to cut it. They're going to need her to bounce back in a hurry. They're going to need Caitlin to bounce back in a strong way. Yeah, prodigal. Hey, Coach Sod's got that tech. The Fever lost their composure, man. The Fisa Collier just got her 40th point, by the way. But the Fever lost their composure, and that starts with the leadership. Coach Christy Sides lost her composure. They lost their composure. They folded under the pressure. They cracked. 24-point loss is very nasty work. Very nasty work. Sister Noble, DeJanae Carrington played real defense on CC today. Yeah, Dewana Bonner. Carrington, as well as uh, Marina Mabry. It was definitely a team effort. It was definitely a team effort. They threw some different looks at Caitlin Clark and completely took her out of this game, to be honest with y'all. We see the final 93-69. to 69. That was the final. Connecticut Sun looked like they had been there. They dominated in every aspect of this game. They looked like a legitimate championship contender. It feels like right now at the moment, and I've played the clip for y'all earlier of Caitlin. They're still believing. They're not going to fold. They're, they're going to come out and fight, but it's, it's, feel, it's giving sweep. It's feeling like a sweep. Sod's got a technical, but, I mean, it was just a bad, bad performance. They got out-hustled. They got out-played. They got out-scored. I mean, I can't tell you the last time the Fever got held to under 70 points. They got held to under 70, y'all. They didn't even get 20 points a quarter. I mean, the defense of the Sun was locked in. They had a game plan, and they executed it flawlessly. They completely took Caitlin Clark out of this game. And I know that was not the debut of a player of Clark's caliber that we expected. And it seems like you guys are really split on the poll right now. Can the Fever force a game three? I'll tell you what, the keys for them forcing the game three, they're going to have to play way better defense. Caitlin's going to have to come out and control the tempo. The way that AT did, Caitlin's got to control the game. She's got to take care of the basketball. She's got to make those shots that we've seen her make a hundred times. They weren't falling today. The same shots that she typically makes were not falling today. They're going to need her to make shots, take care of the basketball, control the tempo of this game, continue to keep the pace, but cut down the turnovers, move the basketball. Kelsey Mitchell's going to have to go back in the kill mode. Melissa Smith has got to stop playing soft. I understand that your mate is on the other squad, but they need you to rip her soul out when it comes down to it. This is playoff basketball right now. They need to, they, they have to play better defense. They have to protect the paint better. They have to win those 50-50 balls.
we have to do something to adjust to the versatility of Dewana Bonner. They got to slow her down. But at that size and 18, going coast to coast, just getting easy layups, they got to slow that down. They got to guard They got to guard the, sh- the three-point line better. They got to put a hand out there and contest Marina Mabry because she lit it up tonight. Free, welcome in, welcome in. They got to get that high octane, octane offense back, that balance that they have. If Mitchell and Clark are hitting, they win. They have no defense. Yeah, they got to play fast. They're like the San Antonio Suns back in the or San Antonio Suns, the Phoenix Suns back in the day. But they're just going to try to outscore you. But being held to 69 points? Look, man, I'm just saying the Connecticut Sun look a, a couple tiers above the fever today. They was out there playing grown woman basketball. The inexperience definitely was shown. This team, ha- most of this team, has never played in the playoffs, and this franchise hasn't been in the playoffs in eight years. The inexperience absolutely shown through today. the The fever looked like a team that was a deer in the headlights. The Connecticut Sun looked like a team that is prepared for a championship run, that has played meaningful games and won a lot of games together. They set the tone. But y'all heard Caitlin say it doesn't matter about the gym or them being on the road. They got to play better. I love her response after the game, and I played that clip. If y'all missed it, I can play it again. Just let me know. But Caitlin seems confident, and I liked her response. We know she's going to go out swinging. She's going to come back swinging. We know she's going to come back swinging. We know this fever team is resilient. And, I mean, the pressure is on Connecticut, really. The Fever, we're not really expecting them to win this series. At least I wasn't. But they can go out and play carefree. The nerves were there today. You could tell. Like, the nerves, they did not look like they were playing Fever basketball today. The nerves were there. They looked shook. Mabry lit it up. Mabry lit it up. And the Fever have struggled to guard the three-point shot all year. We know that. We know that, y'all. That that is something that they've struggled with, just giving up open looks. Right? And and on top of that, man, like, Caitlyn debuted a a new shoe today. She, man, I like, how you gonna get cooked like that in the Kobe's, though, man? So Caitlin warmed up, you know what I'm saying? She was out there in the new Indiana Fever Nike Kobe 5 PEs. Jeez, them things is fire. I ain't gonna lie to black and gold. Like, it, the playoff footwear is definitely a necessity as well. Let me give y'all another closer look right there. But the playoff, I mean, when you're, when you're, when you're representing the Mamba, a killer, a champion, like, you gotta go out there and snap somebody's soul out. That's not what we saw today. I'm just saying. The kicks were on point, though. The kicks were on point. I just got to say. But the intensity of the playoffs is a different beast. This is something that the fever, when inexperience meets the heart of a champion. Oh, man. They say she played like Smush Parker. Had the Kobe's. Had the Kobe's on. Had the Kobe's on warmed up in the Kobe's. Did not give a Kobe-like performance. Prodigal says she played like Smush Parker. I'm just saying, man. Like, with a player of this caliber, this is not the debut that you want to see. But I agree with what you said, Lindy. Usually, Kaylin doesn't have two bad back-to-back games. But each day character has been giving her a go all season. All oh, season. And y'all saw DJ complaining about when she got her that Caitlyn didn't get the follow through foul after Caitlyn smacked her in the head and knocked her contact out, which was wild. Now, make no mistake. This loss is on the entire team. This loss does not fall on one player. 
This loss absolutely does not fall on one player. This loss is on the entire team. They weren't prepared, even down to the coaching staff. It's up to them to get this team prepared to play ball. The intensity was not there. I feel like the effort was lackluster. I feel like they just got outplayed. The offense never got into a rhythm. But they were taking the same shots they, they typically take. They just were not falling. The shots were not falling. Those typical shots, those typical logo threes, those typical step backs that we're typically see, that we see typically go in for Caitlin, we did not see. Yeah, I'm watching the. I got the Minnesota game up right now, 98 to 92. They're over the uh, Phoenix Mercury, 38.3 seconds left. I will say though, man, like Phoenix made this a game. They were down by double digits. Dantas and A.B. were the only bigs that came out to play today. A.B. had some big moments, but it was mostly in garbage time, to be honest with y'all. We saw the physicality down there. Like, she, she didn't have no answers for A.T. or Bonner. Like, they need her to protect the paint better. They got to protect the paint better. There were so many uncontested layups. In transition, they were on their heels most of the game. Like, the Fever never established any type of rhythm. And that's a testament to the defense played by the Sun, giving them different looks. Not the debut that we expected from the Fever, who have been one of the hottest teams in the league since the break. But we didn't see those shots falling. We saw those outlet passes that Caitlin was trying to get up and get out of there real quick. DJ Carrington and this group had free safeties out there picking off passes from all over the place, knocking them out, jumping passes. The Splash Sisters were not splashing today. But I think overall the team just played bad. I will say, man, AB, they be calling some phantom fouls on her. So I get it. You know, she had a solid start. That third quarter was just a disaster for everybody. She was quiet in the second. But I think the, the, the game is called inconsistent at times. Like, you let certain things go and then certain things you're calling like ticky-tack fouls. I, I'm not mad at the fouls, but just call the game consistently for four quarters. That's all I ask. No, nah, the L is not on sides. The L is not on sides specifically. It's on the whole organization. But it starts up top. Like, the coaching staff has to get this team ready to play playoff basketball. Now they know what to expect. I absolutely think they will bounce back in game two. I don't know if they're going to win, but I expect a way more inspired performance, I'll say, in game two. They got their first playoff taste. They, got, they tasted a little blood. They got smacked in the mouth. They got bullied around. They got pushed around out there. But that third quarter was very much so the separator. That third quarter was everything. They came out of that locker room. I don't know what was said at halftime, but the sun came out of that locker room, baby, and they punched the fever in the mouth. Straight haymakers. Be well, I agree. The sun showed experience matters. They looked like a team that had been there before, and that's exactly what A.T. said in her postgame. They looked like a team that had been there before. But maybe now that the nerves are out of the way, the fever come in and play a little bit more free, man. Like, they just didn't look like they were even having fun. This is the most exciting time of the year. Like, yeah, there's a lot of pressure. Yeah, there's a lot on the line. It's winter go home. And it's different pre a level of pressure when your season's on the line, different level of defense, a different level of intensity. But you still got to have fun out there as a young team. 